anyway she's made some really good valid points regarding um going to a private members club and i think there's something i've been thinking about a lot recently again just because at the moment i'm kind of in this weird space where i like going out i like doing the whole clubbing thing that i'm doing but again because i dj so often it kind of takes the shine off of clubbing and really off the back of this junction two festival thing that happened a couple of weeks ago we went sorry last week i've now kind of decided in my head mentally that I'll probably stop going to clubs in general or clubbing as much as I did previously, unless it's going to be to see someone really stellar or someone that you don't usually see in London. Or if you want to go see someone in a particular space, it's really interesting too. Um, I'll probably do that. But once I won't go as much as I did previously and I'll just save my money to go to festivals because of course you get everything like in one. And because of Junction being so great, we're probably thinking about going to Deck Mantle in Amsterdam. There's, I've had my faith has been restored in the ability for festival promoters to put on an actual good electronic music festival centered mostly around DJs. So with that being said, and with the my my time be occupied DJing in uh, Stratford for the most part and doing that whole thing in Leytonstone, whatever, I don't really have the time or the ability to go out as much as I did previously. But I do also want to go somewhere that's kind of cool that might have a good community, that might link up with some people, that might have someone just to kind of just rest and relax, whatever it may be. And also like the like she like this um Abigail mentioned, it's a good little home like home office, home away from home, off uh, an office out of your home. Sorry from point of saying. So at the moment when I'm working freelance and doing my thing, I usually have to go to like um the Ace Hotel here in Liverpool Street. That's quite cool. It's a great place to go to. Um you can usually get um, some good Wi-Fi in there. They've got good comfy chairs. Sometimes the desks are usually taken up because they usually do classes and whatever in there. But for the most part, there's loads of room in the main foyer for you to kind of like sneak around, sit down, make sure your laptop's charged before you go because there's not a lot of plugs sometimes in the seats that you sit in. But for the most part, it does a job, right? They've got a good menu. The waiters are really nice. It's just a cool in environment to go chill in. And it's, again, only 10 minutes down the road from Liverpool Street Station. So it's one train straight back home for me. But I want to go somewhere where I can just do that all the time, right? When I just want to go out of, out of my house, I can just go somewhere to go and jam it because usually the bars and cafes around Shafford are really busy. There's not a lot of room to go sit down, so you really have to come out of your house before 10 a.m. Same with um, Ace Hotel. You can't really leave it until about 1 because by that time, it's already ram-packed with everyone that wants to work already there at the moment. So but the ability to have a shortage house membership would go a long way in kind of getting that kind of sorted. But again, you know, I'm not I'm not really fussed about where it is. It'll be great if it was Shoreditch House, but considering it's, a, I think, well, I say, eleven hundred kind of roughly, or or fifteen hundred to go get a membership. Plus, it's I think four hundred pound upfront per year, so it's quite a bit to kind of do. But again, if I save up again, I'm pretty sure I can probably achieve that, no problem. Um, and then I looked at there's a big list I actually found actually of other places that also do um that are also private members club and they're sort of ranked by prices. Kind of quickly go through some of those now. Again, I'm not too sure if it's wanky as well. I don't know how that's gonna come off, but again, the older you get, the more disposable income you have, you start to maybe do away with certain you know things that you don't do because again i'm not signing to that many classes my gym is fairly cheap i kind of you know i usually I, i'm gonna have a bike soon too so i'll cycle most places so there won't be that need to be spending as much money on other things that people do i don't smoke i drink but only when i go out so i don't spend that much money on things so if i can funnel that kind of funding drinking leisurely activities into a shortage house part membership and again, you can always invite a couple of friends down. They'll be more than happy to come down with you and buy the first round or two because they're happy to go into your house. And again, it's a good spot to kind of meet your friends. I think it'd be quite a cool thing to do. Um, anyway, let's um, go down the list. So it's a list from Business Advisor of the 25 of London's most exclusive private members clubs ranked by prices. And again, this is very handy for me. Um, London's private membership circuit has come a long way since the days of Stuffy Gentleman's Club. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's go down the list. Number one, 150 a year, I'm assuming, is called um, dis, uh, Disrepute. Disrepute in Soho. Disrepute is a hidden gem nestled in within an opulent Soho basement. Offers a carefully created cocktail menu and atmospheric space, perfect for the secret late night sessions. If it's, it is one of the most reasonably priced members bars in London, membership privileges include priority reservation, the ability to book in parties of up to 12 and free access to special events, talks and masterclasses. The club says it is a members bar, not in a conventional sense and applications are welcome from people, all backgrounds and persuasions. Non-members are also welcome to book a table subject to availability. So not really a traditional members bar in that respect. It's more so you get a membership card if you pay extra where you can get priority booking and stuff and you can walk in and get a table whenever you need be. That's quite fine. It's in Soho, so it's a bit far from me. 
Um, I'll prefer Shoreditch House because that's nearer to where I live. If I have to go to Soho, I have to pass Shoreditch, etc. But, you know, it, that could be a good option. Then number two, we have, it, it jumps up from 150 to 500. I think this is the base level price that people have. And I, I'm assuming this 150, this is 500 per year. And I'm assuming you maybe renew it every year. They probably ask you if you want to renew it. Um, hopefully, they don't just take that direct debit out again. Imagine, imagine you done all your Christmas shopping and your direct debit comes out January 1st. You'd be crying. So anyway, it's called... Um, Qua Qua Vidas, Qua Vidas in Soho, nice kind of interior there. Um, so Qua Vidas in Soho is easily recognizable by its iconic neon street sign. Um, is another Soho members club haunt. Its club consists of a first floor bar, lounge, and dedicated members restaurant, which serves quintessentially British cult cuisine. Again, I'm not too keen on British cuisine, so I don't care about that. There's a lot of members club in Soho, and I guess it kind of started, or it must have all started off in Soho, that kind of overall scene. Um, again, not for me personally. Um, under 30s benefit from an, a discount yearly rate of 300 quid. Um, the club doesn't have a blanket policy for membership and says it, that it instead looks like case by case applicants, accepting people without heirs and graces who are interesting and happy to be themselves. That sounds pretty cool, right? At them, for them, for the most part, I'm not mad at them for that. That is the Queen Venus in Soho. Again, most of them in Soho. There's another one. Um, L S car goat in Soho again. I love that staircase. It's fucking beautiful. And it's probably a great Instagram picture that, um, you know, also, also like about what the girl mentioned earlier, this, this Abby girl. Um, I like the fact that Soho house doesn't let you take pictures. I remember that actually in Shoreditch house, you can't take pictures Well, you can of you and your friends, but you can't have the flash on and shit. It's a private members club. People don't want to know. People don't want to be known that they're in there. It's all like the private members version of Bergheim in that respect. So I quite like that. Um, that privacy aspect of it, the fact that you can, it's about, talking and communicating the fact that they have community events so you can link up with other people network too that's quite cool it might be a bit weird though that if i just turn up and i'm the guy there and i'm a you know marketing manager community manager of some sort you know what i mean people there might have more fancier jobs but again it's it's, it's, it's a place to start i guess um doing that whole thing um and then the other one of so that's else car going shoreditch it's 450 per year plus a 250 pound joining fee and it says here the following set in a georgian townhouse in the heart of soho above london's oldest french uh, restaurant el escargot el, el, el escargot right the chic upstairs club is accessed by a psychedelic carpet spiral staircase it is a secretive hideout away from the hustle and bustle of the capital there is an area of electricity to the club which offers its members access to the series of private rooms including the salon noir salon bleu and salon rouge which regulatory which regularly hosts performances and general debauchery under 28 can obtain a reduced membership of 250 pounds if you don't have a pro a, a prosperer you may be asked to visit the club and meet with one of the members team for a drink and a brief introduction which is awesome i like that because i don't have a prosperer i might know somebody that i have a shortage again having to do all that shit like reaching out to somebody it's a bit gay in it i wouldn't want to do that really i want to just like have membership or not have being able to have a meeting and them interview and stuff would be quite cool i don't mind that but the idea of having to reach out to somebody put a facebook status up oh does anyone have a membership and then have people so have them it's a bit virtue signaling because number one you're letting people know that you're interested about having a membership in so in so house and then it's them having to then reach out to you so you're having to hope it's virtue signaling that you're gonna get a membership or you're on your way to applying and it's also virtue signaling that you know people that have membership as well so it kind of gives your circle of friends a kind of cool glaze like oh so sickening this stuff isn't it but again it has everyone has to do the kind of dance and then the last one i'll mention here to move on is a blacks club soho 525 pound per year with a 250 joining fee Nestled in the heart of Soho, Black's Club is famed for its supper clubs that is now host in at least once a month with a focus on either wine, fashion or art. Its website states the theme is always celebrated in style with special menus and plenty of wine. Always a popular night with members. There is a one-off joining fee of 250 and an annual membership cost 525 while a dual or couple membership is 750 Meanwhile, under 30s benefit from discount of 300 and they um, overseas can pay 50 annually. The full membership cost can be found online here. Okay, that was pretty nice too. They're all quite stuffy looking though, isn't it? But just taking a quick glance, there's Chelsea Arts Club here. There's Albertson, Chelsea again. There's Chelsea again. There's Soho again. Bloomsbury, Soho, Soho, Covent Garden, Mayfair, Shoreditch. Okay, cool. But I think the shortage for me is the one to go with. 
again i'm just thinking about doing it now i haven't decided as well on where i should go to and what i should pay but again if anyone has any advice on those kind of things and you know anyone or whatever that can hook it up or that knows someone that knows somebody that please let me know that'd be much much appreciated but again i'm just thinking about it man again i'm not too sure if it's the right thing to do i'm not sure if that's what i need in my life right now it probably isn't um if i'm doubting it but overall you know why not man why not try and stick my head in the fucking private members club circle and again like i said it's just it's just more of a convenience thing for me right i go out quite often i want someone to go and just chill with some friends have a booze have a little boogie network have have, have some good chats and then kind of go home right and it's, and it's it's a good distance for everyone to go back home to right shoreditch house um right in the middle of shoreditch liverpool street bethnal green old street all that stuff is right around the corner um no real excuses really for people not to come out and kind of hang out and shit and i think Pete, your friends will be super stoked if you got a membership and you'll be the most popular kid in your fucking circle of friends imagine just imagine you end up getting the soho house connect right you you are the guy that everyone's like oh man can you put me in the list please i want to come down mate i want to come down you're like yeah brother i know you want to come down i know you want to come down <laughs> so that's for me in that one Let's see how that works or how that goes. Hopefully, I get that work worked out within the next um, few months and stuff. And if I do, I will, of course, keep you guys updated.